Hey guys, James Breen, uh, EFI coming to you live, uh, doing a little discussion about job flow. So um, I'm running a fiery cloud right now, just so I can demonstrate for you guys uh, some of the things that job flow really can do. Um, from my desktop, pretending like this is a fiery or a, a, a PC, um, job flow runs as a separate application that really communicates with the fiery. Um, it's a cloud-based system <clears throat> that I can install on a PC. I cannot install it on a Mac, but I can I can use it from a Mac because it's cloud-based, so I just need the IP address. So I'm just going to launch Jobflow here so you guys can see how it works. Like I said it's browser-based. It comes up to your, your sign-in, and then you just sign in. And then immediately I come up to these, um, these two um, options here of looking at jobs or workflows. And... Um, I'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of, and I'm going to do s several of these, uh, of you know these two things. So the jobs is where you can see the jobs going through the queue, doing all the things it's supposed to do, and then eventually ending up in this completed section. The workflow is where you can import workflows or build workflows. So <clears throat> a quick tutorial on if I wanted to import a workflow, I could go right here and go to the fiery job flow library and this will take me out to the EFI page where there's already built workflows right here okay so for instance um, this will tell you the name of the workflow the application that supports it this is job flow base which is the free version and job flow the paid for version so this particular workflow will work on both gives you a little description and then this is where I could download it so if I just click this it's going to download a zip file Okay, and then if I go back to my job flow, I click on here and say import, and then I could import that workflow right here. Click open. Okay, it gives me a description. And all the resources that are necessary to make that workflow work that are built, they're already built in this workflow, it will alert you. In this case, I already have one of those in there called generate bleed. So it's saying, hey, you already have that resource. Do you want to replace it or do you just want to continue? Well, I already have it, so just continue. Again, it's alerting me. There's another one called Bars Universal. I already have it. You already have one called Rotate All Pages. So it's just saying all of these resources are already in there by importing this workflow. I basically imported this twice. So it's imported it in, and now it'll add that to my list of workflows, which is this one right here. Um, so again, just you know, keep in mind that we already have some workflows built on this site, and you can go to that site and you can download those workflows, and it'll tell you what it does. Uh, some of these even have a summary. Um, the other thing is, is when you download these these zip files, uh, do yourself a favor, open them up, uh, look and see what's in the compressed folder. Sometimes there is a PDF file that's associated with that workflow that you can use as a test. Okay, so just a little, you know, insight to how that works. Um, but this is the area where you can also build workflows. So, if, for instance, if I wanted to build a workflow, I could start right here, give it a name. I could give it a description. And then it's going to open up my um, workflow builder. First thing it's going to ask me is where's my input source? This is where I could say I want the source to be someplace to, that's... Um, other than what I already have configured. Um, when you first build a workflow, it's going to let you pick the location. And if you don't pick a location, by default, it's going to just make a smart folder on the desktop. But I could pick a SMB, an FTP, a secure FTP, a Dropbox, and add this as an input location when I'm building this workflow. All right, now I'm not going to do that. I'm going to go back to my workflow, this test one, and I'm going to click back on my workflow and I'm just gonna leave it as the default but then I'm gonna click here and I'm gonna start adding things so there's all these different modules that I can add to this workflow I can do a fry replete uh, pre-flight I can do an image enhance um, I can use impose templates I can put an approval model in if it needs to be approved by somebody before the workflow can actually print I can uh, do this correct connect and um, again a pre-flight not a fiery pre-flight in particular I want to kind of point out this correct all of these corrections are coming from in focus pit stop look at all these things 
There's hundreds of them. And if you're uh, adequate at uh, in focus pit stop, you can add your own. You can create your own. This generate bleed and this smart rotate pages 90 degrees I created in uh, in focus pit stop, and then I just imported it in here. All right, and so you you can literally build. It's like building blocks. You can keep picking these categories and adding things you need to do to the job in order to get it uh, the way you want it before it sends it off to the firing. So those actions that I was talking about is again right here. Under resources, this is where I could literally go in, find the resource that I want to pull in. And in this case, this would be uh, an action list. So you see the generate bleed. I created that and then all I did was clicked on here, found where I created it. And I don't think I have it on this computer. Uh, I think I did that somewhere else. Um, but I could find that and then I could upload that into my action list and now it becomes an action list I can use in any workflow. So just a quick little tutorial about how to build workflows. Um, I suggest if you want to learn more about how to use Jobflow, you go to this Fiery Jobflow library, this page here. Uh, down at the bottom there is, um, where is it? It's under resources, I think. Yeah, right here. There's our online training right here, okay, and materials. There is a presentation on this. There's case studies. And somewhere down here in the bottom, um, there is a how-to. So here's, here's a fiery example how-to guide for certain jobs, how to set up global notifications, uh, learning how to use the InFocus smart variables, um, backup and restore. And down here at the bottom, there's, a, I think it's called a cookbook. That's really, yeah, here we go. Uh, this Connect cookbook. So there is a ton of resources in here uh, for you guys to play around with job flow and, you know, just even uploading some of these these standard workflows that were were created and testing them. Uh, the next video I'll put up will be actually showing you how to put a file into the workflow and watching it work. All right, great guys.